Welcome. Hi. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon. Wherever you are, fellow citizens of Earth, thank you for being here. We're all together in this moment, and it feels great. Welcome to a special collaboration between Peninsula Players Theatre and Chicago Radio Theatre, as, le- as we proudly present our live audio production of Trifles by Susan Glassbell. Tonight, because our play is a mystery, we're going to do things a little differently. And to get you in the mood, we'll uncover the mystery of backstage before the show. You've already heard a little bit of it. But have you ever wondered, just before the show begins, what are those actors up to? Let's check in with the ladies first. Hmm? Everyone decent? No, oh. well, I guess I am. There's Erica warming up. <laughs> mama, 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 mama. And that's Steph sipping tea and reading over her script. Have a good show, ladies. Thank you. And uh, some of you may have heard of this fellow. Of course, he has his own dressing room and his own cellist. Mr. Winkler? Hmm? Typically, he refuses to speak before the show, but let's see if we can get him to, uh... Oh, hello. Oh, Greg, hi. Just uh, giving the audience a sneak peek backstage before we get started. I didn't mean to disturb you, sir. Oh, no, 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 no. That's okay. Actually, I'm glad you're here because it gives me a chance to say that the Peninsula Players Theater has a free play reading series up in Door County every winter called The Play's The Thing which has been very popular for some years now. This year's program got interrupted, so for those friends who enjoyed attending and for those friends who could never be there, we present this, a very live play reading. And thank you, Kevin, for helping make this happen. Sure. And now, you must leave me. I am getting ready to act. Yes, sir. Mm. Once again, that was Peninsula Players Artistic Director Greg Winkler in a rare and 100% unplanned pre-show conversation. What a pleasant fellow, and what a great organization and community they've built with their patrons. Okay, and here's Foley artist Ellie Maitland, a table absolutely full of... Ellie, what even is that? These sounds are going to blow us away tonight. I get it, Ellie. Thanks. What's your favorite Foley prop, by the way? I, I was just uh, just wondering if... Oh, sorry. She was definitely practicing a sequence there. Thank you. Finally, last stop before we, before we start. My name's Kevin, and I would usually be in this dressing room here with Neil. There's my robe and the bottle of champagne chilling for after the show. And Neil, look at this work ethic. Neil Friedman is doing his usual pre-show push-ups. 78, 79. All right. There was your quick peek backstage. I'll let you folks get back to your seats and let's light this fire. With you today, we few, we happy few are Stephanie Diaz as Mrs. Peters. Erica Elam as Mrs. Hale, Kevin Christopher Fox as Sheriff Peters, Neil Friedman as Farmer Hale, Ellie Maitland creating live Foley sounds, Greg Vinkler as Investigating Attorney Henderson. Original music is by Christopher Kriz. And now, from six closets and desks all over Chicago, coming to you 100% live, Peninsula Players Theater and Chicago Radio Theater proudly present Trifles by Susan Glassbell. It is winter. Our play takes place in the kitchen of the Wright Farm, located in a hollow in Dixon County. Mr. Anderson, Ooh. sir. Mr. Oh. Hale. Ladies. Oh. Hale. Oh, oh, my word. Thank you. Oh. 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 Fire? Oh. Here we go. Let's add some... Uh... Oh. And some more. Oh, good. Oh, there there, there, she, go. is. there, there she is. There she is. Much better. Oh, well. This feels good. Uh... Come up to the fire, ladies. I'm not cold. 
Now, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Hale, hmm? before we move things about, will you explain to Mr. Attorney Henderson here just what you saw when you came here yesterday morning? Yes, yes. By the way, has anything been moved? Are things just as you left them yesterday? Oh, it's uh, well, just the same. When it dropped below zero last night, I thought I'd better send Frank out this morning to make a fire for us. No use getting pneumonia with a big case on. But I told him not to touch anything except the stove, and you know Frank. Well, somebody should have been left here yesterday. Oh, yesterday, when I had to send Frank to Morris Center for that man who went crazy. I want you to know I had my hands full yesterday. Well, I knew you could get back from Omaha by today, and as long as I went over everything here myself... Yes, 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 yes. Well, uh, Mr. Hale, hmm. tell just what happened when you came here yesterday morning. Well, Harry and I started to town with a, a load of potatoes. We came along the road from my place, and as I got here, I said... Uh, I'm going to see if I can't get John Wright to go in with me on a, a party telephone. I spoke to Wright about it once before, and uh, he put me off, saying folks talk too much anyway, and all he asked was peace and quiet. I guess you know about how much he talked himself, but I thought maybe if I went to the house and talked about it before his wife, though I said to Harry that I didn't know as... What his wife wanted made much difference to John. Uh, yeah, 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 let's talk about that later, Mr. Hale. I do want to talk about that, but tell now just what happened when you got to the house. Mm. I didn't hear or see anything. I knocked at the door, and still it was all quiet inside. Well, I knew they must be up. It was past eight o'clock. So I knocked again, and I thought I heard somebody say, Come in. Hmm. I wasn't sure. I'm not sure yet. But I opened the door, this door, hmm. and there in that rocker sat Mrs. Wright. Hmm. <gasps> oh, and what well, was she doing? She was rocking back and forth. She had her apron in her hand. It was kind of, kind of pleating it. Uh-huh. And how did she look? Well, she looked queer. Yes? How do you mean, uh, queer? Well, as if she didn't know what she was going to do next. And, and kind of done up. Uh-huh. How did she seem to feel about your coming? Well, I don't think she minded one way or the other. She didn't pay much attention. I said, how do, Mrs. Wright? It's cold, ain't it? And she said, is it? And went on kind of pleating at her apron. Well, I was surprised. She didn't ask me to come up to the stove or sit down, but just sat there, not even looking at me. So I said, I want to see John. And then she laughed. Hmm. I guess you would call it a laugh. I thought of Harry and the team outside, so I said a, a little sharp. Can I see John? No, she says. Kind of dull-like. Ain't he home, says I. Yes, says she. He's home. Then uh, why can't I see him? I asked her out of patience. Because he's dead, says she. Dead, says I. She just nodded her head, not getting a bit excited, but rocking back and forth. Why, well, where is he, says I, not knowing what to say. She just pointed upstairs like that. I got up with the idea of going up there. I walked from there to here, and then I says, what? Well, what did he die of? He died of a rope round his neck, says she. Hmm. And just went on, pleating at her apron. Hmm. Well, I went out and called Harry. I thought I, I might need some help. Hmm. We went upstairs, and there he was, lying. And yes, 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 I think I'd rather have you go into that upstairs, where you can point it all out. Now, just 
Go on now with the rest of the story. Well, uh, my first thought was to get that rope off. It looked... Uh, <clears throat> but Harry, he went up to him and he said, you know, No, he's dead, all right, and, and we better not touch anything. So we went back downstairs. She was still sitting the same way. Hmm. Has anybody been notified, I asked. No, says she, unconcerned. Who did this, Mrs. Wright, said Harry. He said it businesslike, and she stopped pleating of her apron. I don't know, she says. Well, you don't know, says Harry. No, says she. Weren't you sleeping in the bed with him, says Harry. Yes, says she, but, but I was on the outside. Somebody slipped a rope round his neck and strangled him, and you didn't wake up, says Harry. I didn't wake up, she said after him. We must have looked as if we didn't see how that could be, for after a minute she said, Oh, I, I sleep sound. Hmm. Huh. Harry was going to ask her more questions, but I said, Maybe we ought to let her tell her story first to the to the coroner or, or the sheriff. So Harry went as fast as he could to Rivers' place, where there's a telephone. And what did Mrs. Wright do when she knew that you had gone for the coroner? She moved from that chair to this one over here and just sat there with her hands held together and, and looking down. I got a feeling I ought to make some conversation, so I said I had come in to see if, if John wanted to put in a telephone. And at that, she started to laugh. And then she stopped and looked at me, scared. Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe it wasn't scared. I wouldn't like to say it was. Soon Harry got back, and then Dr. Lloyd came, and you, Sheriff Peters. And so I guess that's all I know that you don't. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll go upstairs first, and then out to the barn, and uh, around there. Now, Sheriff, you're convinced that there was nothing important... Here, you know, nothing that would point to any motive. Hmm, uh, no, nothing here but kitchen things. Oh, goodness, here's a nice mess. Oh, ew. Oh, her fruit. It did freeze. She worried about that when it turned so cold. She said the fire would go out and her jars would break. Hmm. <laughs> Can you beat the women? Held for murder and worrying about her preserves. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess before we're through, she may have something more serious than preserves to worry about. Hmm? Well, uh, women are used to worrying over trifles. Mm. And yet, for all their worries, what would we do without the ladies? Hmm? Oh, it's Dirty towels. Uh, where's, um... Oh, my, not much of a housekeeper, would you say, ladies? There's a great deal of work to be done on a farm. Oh, yeah, yeah, to be sure. And yet, well, I know there are some Dixon County farmhouses which do not have such roller towels, hmm? Those towels get dirty awful quick. Men's hands aren't always as clean as they might be. Ah, loyal to your sex, I see. But you and Mrs. Wright were neighbors. I suppose you were friends, too. Well, I've not seen much of her of late years. I've not been in this house. It's more than a year. And why was that? Well, you didn't like her. I liked her all well enough. Farmer's wives have their hands full, Mr. Henderson. And then... Well, Yes. It never seemed a very cheerful place. <laughs> no, it's not cheerful. No, I, I shouldn't say she had the um, homemaking instinct. Well, I don't know as John Wright had either. Oh? You mean that they didn't get on very well? No, I don't mean anything. But uh, well, I don't think a place would be any cheerfuller for John Wright's being in it. Yes, well, I, yes, I'd like to talk more of that a little later. Now, I want to get the lay of things upstairs now. Hmm. Uh, I suppose anything Mrs. Peters does will be all right. 
She was to take in some clothes for Mrs. Wright, you know, and a, a few little things. Oh. We left in such a hurry yesterday. Yes, but I would like to see what you take, Mrs. Peters. Hmm? And uh, keep an eye out for uh, anything that might be of use to us. Well, yes, Mr. Henderson. Oh, boy. I would hate to have... Oh. I'd hate to have men coming into my kitchen, snooping around and criticizing. Uh, here. Of course, it's no more than their duty. Well, duty's all right. But I guess that deputy sheriff that came out to make the fire might have got a little of this dirt on here. I wish I'd thought of that sooner. It seems mean to talk about her for not having things slicked up when she had to come away in such a hurry. She had bread set out. Uh. She was going to put this here, in the bread box, but she... Well, it's a shame about her fruit. I wonder if it's all gone. Oh, I think there's some here that's all right, Mrs. Peters. Yes. Here, well, this is cherries, too. I declare, I believe that's the only one. She'll feel awful bad after all her hard work in the hot weather. I remember the afternoon I put up my cherries last summer. <laughs> Oh, oh! Uh, you're right. I ought not to disturb her chair. Well, I must get those clothes and things from the front room closet. Hmm. You coming with me, Mrs. Hale? You could help me carry them. Oh, uh, yes, here. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. These two? Hmm. <laughs> My, it's cold in there. John Wright was close. I think maybe that's why Minnie kept so much to herself. You know, she didn't even belong to the ladies' aid. I suppose she felt she couldn't do her part. At one then, you don't enjoy things when you feel shabby. You know, she used to wear pretty clothes and be lively when she was Minnie Foster, one of the town girls singing in the choir. But that... <laughs> that was 30 years ago. Are this all you was to take in? Well, she said she wanted an apron. Uh, funny thing to want, for there isn't much to get you dirty in jail, goodness knows. Mm. But I suppose just to make her feel more natural. She said they was in the top drawer in this cupboard. Yes, here. And then her little shawl that always hung behind the door. Yes, here it is. Mrs. Peters. Yes, Mrs. Hale? Do you think she did it? Oh, I don't know. Well, I don't think she did. Asking for an apron and her little shawl, worrying about her fruit. Oh, Mr. Peters. Shh, shh. Shh. Mm. Uh, Mr. Peters says it looks bad for her. Mm. Mr. Henderson is awful sarcastic in a speech, and he'll make fun of her saying she didn't wake up. Well... I guess John Wright didn't wake up when they were slipping that rope under his neck. No, it, it's strange. It must have been done awful crafty and, and still. Hmm. They say it was such a funny way to kill a man, rigging it all up like that. Oh, that's just what Mr. Hale said. There was a gun in the house. He says that's what he can't understand. Mr. Henderson said coming out that what was needed for the case was a, a motive. Something to show anger or sudden feeling. Well, I don't see any signs of anger around here. Huh. The table's only wiped to here. Well, I wonder how they're finding things upstairs. I hope she had it a little more read up up there. You know, it seems kind of sneaking. Locking Minnie up in town and then coming out here and trying to get her own house to turn against her. But, Mrs. Hale, the law is the law. Oh, I suppose it is. You better loosen up your coat and things, Mrs. Peters, or you won't feel them when you go out. Yes. Oh, there. That's better. Hmm. Look, here's her sewing basket. She was piecing a quilt. Oh, well, it's a log cabin pattern. It's pretty, isn't it? Hmm. I wonder if she was going to quilt it or just knot it. They wonder if she was going to quilt it 
or just not it. <laughs> yeah. Well, ooh, Frank's fire didn't do much up there, did it? Mm. Well, um, let's go out to the barn and get that cleared up. Ooh. Good night. I don't know if there's anything so strange or taking up our time with little things while we're waiting for them to get the evidence. I don't see as it's anything to laugh about. Well, of course, they, they've got awful important things on their minds. Well, Mrs. Peters, well, look at this piece. Here, this is the one she was working on. Look at the sewing. All the rest of it has been so nice and even. And look at this. It's all over the place. Why, it looks as if she didn't know what she was about. Oh, what are you doing, Mrs. Hale? I'm just pulling out a stitch or two that's not sewed very good. Bad sewing always made me fidgety. Well, I don't think we ought to touch things. I'll just finish up this end. Mrs. Peters? Yes, Mrs. Hale? What do you suppose she was so nervous about? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if she was nervous. I sometimes so awful queer when I'm just tired. Well, I must get these clothes and things wrapped up. The men may be through sooner than we think. I wonder where I can find a piece of paper and string. Um, that cupboard, maybe? Hmm. Why, here's a bird cage. Hmm. Did she have a bird, Mrs. Hale? Why, I, I don't know whether she did or not. I've not been here for so long. Well, there was a man around last year selling canaries cheap, but I don't know if she took one. Maybe she did. She used to sing real pretty herself. Seems funny to think of a bird here. But she must have had one, or why would she have a cage? I wonder what happened to it. Oh, I suppose maybe the cat got it. No, no, she didn't have a cat. She's got that feeling some people have about cats, hmm. being afraid of them. My cat got in her room, and she was real upset and asked me to take it out. <laughs> My sister Bessie was like that. It's queer, ain't it? Why, look at this cage door. It's broke. One hinge is, is pulled apart. Looks as if someone must have been rough with it. Why, yes. Now, I wish if they're going to find any evidence, they'd be about it. I don't like this place. But I'm awful glad you came with me, Mrs. Hale. It would be also awful lonesome for me sitting here alone. Yeah, it would, wouldn't it? But I tell you what I do wish, Mrs. Peters. I wish I had come over sometimes when she was here. I... I wish I had. But of course you were awful busy, Mrs. Hale. Your house and your children? Well, I could have come. I stayed away because it weren't cheerful. And that's why I ought to have come. I... Uh, I never liked this place. Maybe because it's down in a hollow and you don't see the road. I don't know what it is, but it's a lonesome place. And always was. I wish I'd come over to see Minnie Foster sometimes. I can see now. It... Well, you mustn't <sighs> reproach yourself, Mrs. Hale. Somehow, we just don't see how it is with other folks until something comes up. Not having children makes less work, but it makes a quiet house. And Wright out to work all day, and no company when he did come in. Did you know John Wright, Mrs. Peters? Not to know him. I've seen him in town. They say he was a good man. Uh, yes, good. He didn't drink and kept his word as well as most, I guess, and paid his debts. But he was a hard man, Mrs. Peters. Just to pass the time of day with him... It's like a raw wind that gets to the bone. I should think she would have wanted a bird. But what do you suppose came of it? I don't know, unless it got sick and died. You weren't raised around here, were you? No. You didn't know her, Minnie? Not till they brought her yesterday. She, well, <laughs> come to think of it, she was kind of like a bird herself. Real sweet and pretty, but kind of timid and fluttery. How she did change. 
Tell you what, Mrs. Peters, why don't you take the quilt in with you? It might take up her mind. Why, I think that's a real nice idea, Mrs. Hale. There couldn't possibly be any objection to it, could there? Now, just what would I take? I wonder if her patches are in here, and her things. Ah, uh, I expect this has got sewing things in it. What a pretty box. <laughs> Looks like something somebody would give you. Maybe her scissors are in here. Oh, 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 oh. oh. There's something wrapped up in this piece of silk. Why, this isn't her scissors. Oh, Mrs. Peters, it's... <gasps> it's the bird. But Mrs. Peters, look at it. It's neck. Look at its neck. It's all uh, other side, too. Somebody wrong its neck. I guess, um, I haven't come to think of it. Something doesn't quite sit right. We should... Here, the box, under the quilting pieces. Yes. Good, yes. <sighs> well, ladies, have you decided whether she was going to quilt it or knot it? <laughs> We think she was going to not it. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, well, that's interesting, I'm sure. Hmm. Hmm. Well, has the bird flown? Uh, we think the cat got it. Oh, is there a cat? Uh, well, not now. <laughs> They're superstitious, you know. Hmm. They leave. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, no sign at all of anyone having come from the outside, their own rope. Uh, now, Sheriff, let's go up again and go over it piece by piece. <sighs> it would have to be someone who knew, knew just the... Um... She liked the bird. She was going to bury it in that pretty box. When I was a girl, my kitten, there was a boy took a hatchet, and before oh. my eyes, oh, and before I could get there, if they hadn't held me back, I would have hurt him. I wonder how it would seem to never have had any children around. No, John Wright wouldn't like the bird. A thing that sang. She used to sing. He killed that, too. We don't know who killed the bird. I knew John Wright. It was an awful thing was done in this house that night, Mrs. Hale. Killing a man while he slept. Slipping a rope round his neck that choked the life out of him. His neck choked the life out of him. We don't know who killed him. We don't know. If there'd been years and years of nothing, and then a bird to sing to you, it would be awful still after the bird was still. Well, I know what stillness is. When we homesteaded in Dakota and my first baby died, after he was two years old and me with no other than... How soon do you suppose they'll be through looking for evidence? I know what stillness is. The law has got to punish crime, Mrs. Hale. I wish you'd seen Minnie Foster when she wore a white dress with blue ribbons and stood up there in the choir and sang. Oh, you know, I wish I'd come over here once in a while. That was a crime. That was a crime. Who's going to punish that? We mustn't... Take on. Now, I might have known she needed help. I know how things can be for women. I tell you, it's queer, Mrs. Peters. We live close together and we live far apart. We all go through the same things. It's all just, just a different kind of the same thing. If I was you, I wouldn't tell her her fruit was gone. Tell her it ain't. Tell her it's all right. Here, take this jar and prove it to her. She... We, we, she, she may never know whether it was broke or not. My, it's a good thing the men couldn't hear us. Wouldn't they just laugh, getting all stirred up over a little thing like a dead canary. 
as if that could have anything to do with... <laughs> with... <laughs> Wouldn't they laugh? <laughs> Maybe they oh. would, maybe they wouldn't. Oh, no. Peters, it's all perfectly clear, except a reason for doing it. Mm. Uh, but you know juries when it comes to women. Mm -hmm. If there were some definite thing, you know, something to show, uh, something to make a story about, uh, a thing that would connect up with this Strange way of doing it. Well, I've got the team around. Mm. Uh, pretty cold out there. You run out, Mr. Hale. All right. Well, I'm going to stay here a while by myself. Uh, you can send Frank out for me, can't you? Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to go over everything. I'm not satisfied that we can't do better. Do you want to see what Mrs. Peters is going to take in to Mrs. Wright? Oh, <laughs> I guess they're not very dangerous things the ladies have picked out. <laughs> um, no, 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 no. Mrs. Peters doesn't need supervising. You know, for that matter, a sheriff's wife is married to the law. Huh? <laughs> Ever think of it that way, Mrs. Peters? Not just that way. <laughs> <laughs> married to the law. <laughs> oh, uh, I, uh, I, I just want you to come in here a minute, George. Uh, hmm? We ought to take a look at these windows. Oh, yeah, the windows. Mrs. Hale. Mrs. Peters. We're taking that box. <laughs> oh, it's too big for my bag. I, I, I'll just have to take the little... Oh, he's... I can't. Mrs. Hale. Oh, uh, here, the box. I, here, it'll just go in my coat. There. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, don't you think these quilt pieces for her as well? Hmm. <laughs> well, Sheriff, at least we found out that she was not going to quilt it. She was going to, um, oh, what is it you call it, ladies? We call it not it. Mr. Henderson. special show. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we enjoyed making it for you. If you'd like to connect with us or help support Peninsula Players, please visit PeninsulaPlayers.com. That's P-E-N-I-N-S-U-L-A Players.com. We hope to hear you again soon. This is Peninsula Players Theater, Chicago Radio Theater, signing